Open a Familia, hoy tenemos uno de los programas más especiales, con los dos grandes de la electrónica, Lauren Garnier y Juan Arnau. Van a compartir con nosotros experiencias, relación y muchísimas cosas más. No os lo perdáis. Can you both tell us about your first time you met? <laughs> no, I, don't I, I was going to say, what, when, when was it? Um, for sure, it was at the Florida. I remember very well the first time I came to Florida. It was a long time ago, maybe 18 years ago, 18, 20 years ago. And It's 19 years ago because you came here for the first summer and then you come to the Florida. Was it yeah, after? Yes. Okay, so... So I came, I came to Florida and I was with um, uh, Lady B. We did a NEF communication night and I remember, I, I remember one thing. Um, I think you got in touch with Eric, the guy I was working with, and you said to him, you know, techno is, is not a big thing yet. And, and the thing in the club, um, if people don't, don't throw you bottles, it's okay. You know, he, he said, as long as they, as they don't throw all the bottles to you, It means it's okay. So we came there thinking, fuck, what's going to happen? And one of the guys with us, I think there was Scanex. I think Scanex was there. And there was a, one guy called Lady B. And he was a, a drag queen DJ. So getting there. And, and, and Juan said to us, he said, we had Front 242 last month or something. And then all the crowd sent, sent them bottles. So we thought... What's going to happen to us? You know, we were like really scared. And we played and we only got four bottles. So we said to Juan at the end, four bottles. And he said, this is a success. <laughs> and um, it was crazy. It was mad. And I remember that night really, really clearly. 19 years ago. There you go. Do you remember? Yes, I do remember. Bueno, vino hace 19 años en español. Vino hace 19 años, vino con Ricardo Robles del Sonar. Recuerdo que el día antes había estado Joaquín Sabina y un mes antes había estado Front 242. Fue un cambio radical que hicimos en el Florida. Y realmente fue una experiencia divertida, muy, muy emocionante, porque fue a pasar de lo que era una discoteca clásica en un pueblecito pequeño que era Fraga, a tratar con una de las figuras imprescindibles de lo que después ha sido la electrónica moderna, como es Laura Garnier. Y bueno, fue un éxito. Realmente eh, la gente no entendió lo que hacía, y eso significó que hacía una cosa buena, ¿no? Realmente cuando haces, intentas hacer un cambio y la gente lo entiende a la primera, es que realmente no haces un cambio. Cuando haces un cambio y la gente le cuesta, significa que has hecho algo bueno, ¿no? Y Lorán eh, tuvo el honor, junto a Jeff Mills y a Francesco Farfa en aquellos tiempos, de ser de los tres primeros que pisaron las pistas de Florida, de lo que después ha sido un club legendario en lo que es la electrónica. Y, y siempre estaremos agradecidos. Maricruz, al que Lorán llama a Juanita, muy... Eh, muy, muy, muy familiarmente, ¿no? Me llamo Juan y Juanita. Lo tiene, lo tiene como, como un hijo mayor, ¿no? Quiero decir, no como un hermano, sino como un hijo. Y lo trata como tal, ¿no? Yes, es como familiar. Y, y mi padre y mi madre, pues también, ¿no? Lo recordaremos siempre. Y él sabe que, que tiene no solo un club en Fraga, sino una parte de su familia. Y que siempre que quiera tiene unas puertas abiertas, no solo como artista, sino también como persona, ¿no? ¿Cuál es la más memorable experiencia que has ever shared? Wow, there's been a lot, there's been a lot. Uh, together, I mean, I mean, alongside with Juan was the, I have this image, this crazy image of the very, very first Monegros festival. It's funny because um, I came to Florida and I was one of the first one to come and play techno there when, when he wanted to change the club. When he did the first Monegros, I went to play the first Monegros And then I think I did the opening of... Uh, did I do the opening here or, or the first week or something like this on this club? El Row? I think I did the opening. So, so, so we have, you know, we have some kind of a nice relationship like that. But uh, the first Monegros, I remember very well. It was like three or four thousand capacity. It was not very big. And the stage was really low. And it was no security. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a party, and everybody from the village was down there. And I remember there was one guy, he must be about 45, 50, really drunk. And he had like a, a leather jacket, 
And he kept opening his jacket. He had no T-shirt or anything underneath. And he had a, you know, a, a nunchaku, you know, one of these kung fu thing, you know, with the two wooden stick like this. And all night, he was in front of stage. And then he was holding his nunchaku going like that. Bang. And then banging on the stage and then putting it back underneath his arm like this. Doing this and then bang on stage. He did this for four hours. And all my sets, I was looking at this guy thinking, do not come on stage. Don't come and hit me. You know, I really hope this guy is not going to get pissed off because he was really drunk. It was obvious he was drunk. And this is the memory I have from, from you know, one of one parties, you know. But um, it's not the best moment I had with him. But this, is, this comes to my mind when I think of one and the parties and all the stuff we've done together. I mean, there's been some absolutely amazing time. Even the last time I played at Florida with LBS was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, we went there after all these years thinking, I hope it hasn't changed because Florida was, was still a very special place to go and play to. And the last time we went, it was like the first days. People were going absolutely crazy. And I don't know, there's something in that club and every time I go back there, there's something really strong that happens with the crowd. And the crowd gives you so much, so much love, energy and everything that is always very special. So one for me at the beginning was Florida, and then, and then I came here, and then the last time we did LBS was amazing. We had a great time. Um, you know, when, when we did the live show at, at Monegos was amazing. This year Monegos was great, and we're a bit scared because we played at seven o'clock, and it was brilliant. I mean, we loved it. So we've done a lot of things, and, and musically I've, I've I've gone through a lot, you know, live shows and DJ sets and we went to the to the Monegos festival when it was really, really cold that year that everybody was searching for sweatshirts and it was so cold and we have to have so much energy to get the people dancing. So we had some some ups and downs, but it's just a one long, beautiful relationship. You know, he's always welcomed me extremely like like like, like a member of the family, always. And 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 I love family business, you know, I like going to a place where you meet the father and then you know everybody's working together and this is his family business and it's a beautiful story. So I feel, I feel very special and very, well, very welcome every time I, I go there. I don't know if this answers your question, but, but you know, it's just what we have together. I remember a very interesting story that I don't know if you remember que es cuando vino a presentar su, un disco que era el 20, un disco que hizo que se llama 20, que era el 20, mira, se y pinchó a, en el club durante muchos, muchas horas y al final del, del, del set él acabó la sesión a las 8 de la mañana y eh, mi padre fue a la cabina, estaba allí en la cabina y tal y le empezó a preguntar cosas sobre el disco, ¿no? Sobre las canciones, sobre el disco, sobre la música. Mi padre en aquel tiempo pues debía tener 79 años, 78 años. Y a la semana mañana él estaba súper cansado, estaba agotado. Le contestó las preguntas a mi padre. Y al día siguiente me escribió, porque tenemos los, los correos y tal. Y me dijo, oye Juan, no sé si te recuerdas tú, me dijo, oye Juan, vendré a tu casa siempre que quieras. Pero exámenes con tu padre por la mañana, nunca más. ¿eh? No quiero que nadie me pregunte más por la mañana. Realmente es uno de los discos que es más preferidos de mi padre y esto me, de mi padre, no de mi hijo, ¿eh? que también lo es. Y esto para mí me llena de satisfacción, que es decir, cuando oigo a mi padre hablar de Laurent Garnier, una persona mayor, una persona que ahora está pasando unos momentos un poco difíciles y aún se acuerda, ahora tenemos que, que llamarle ahora a las 10 o las 11 para decirle cómo está el ambiente, cuánta gente hay, pues para mí me llena de satisfacción tener un padre al que le tenga que explicar qué está haciendo Laurent Garnier en el club para estas horas, ¿no? es, es una satisfacción para mí. What is the most remarkable thing about each other work? La pasión que hace por lo que hace, ¿no? Es una persona que respeto muchísimo. Siempre sabe, siempre ha hecho en su historia, en su carrera, lo que él ha querido conveniente para él. Yo lo he respetado siempre. Hay muchas veces que yo quería que estuviera en mi casa y él no ha querido. Yo lo he respetado porque sé que ha llevado muy bien su carrera. Sé que es la persona, dijo que ha compartido mejor su vida personal con su vida artística. Yo lo felicito por esto porque realmente ha tenido mucho cuidado con su familia, con su mujer, con su hijo. Lo felicito por esto, lo he respetado. Y es la persona, yo creo, más cabal, ¿no? con más sentido común de todos los artistas que conozco. ¿no? Aparte de ser la persona, como te decía antes, 
que tiene más pasión cuando, cuando está o pinchando, remezclando o haciendo un directo, ¿no? Tienes que verlo en los vídeos, en directo, lo que hace, el sentimiento, cómo cierra los ojos, no solamente él, sino sus, sus compañeros en, en el show, ¿no? Y es lo que destacaría más, es el respeto que tengo hacia él, porque es un gran creador, es un gran músico, es una gran persona, y es por eso que siempre que hay un acontecimiento especial en nuestra familia, tanto en Monegros como en los clubs, como en... Que queremos que esté con él, ¿no? Queremos que esté con nosotros. Lo digo, lo digo y creo que se me nota, porque soy un mentiroso, ¿no? Y creo que se me nota que lo digo realmente con cariño y que, y que lo digo de verdad, con sentimiento. Just what I want to say, just what I want to say is, um, it's quite true in my career, I, I kind of made a lot of turns, you know, twists and turns. I never did the same thing on and on again. I always wanted to experiment, try new things. Sometimes it was difficult, sometimes it was dangerous. I knew that, but for me, somebody that always does the same thing is kind of digging his own grave. I know where my bass is. My bass is DJing, playing music to other people, trying to make them dance. But besides that, there's much more to do with that. And um, one, one wonderful thing, and with the relationship we have together, every time I came with a new project, I'd love to do live with musicians. I'd love to do DJ and live. I'd love to come with a saxophone player. I'd love to come and, and spin 12 hours. I'd like to come and play funk and soul all night. One always said yes. Always, he always trust, you know, trusted our choice, believed in us, and always said, "Let's do it." If it's not in a big room, let's try to find another room. Every time we talk, and every time we find a solution, and there isn't that many people like that around the world. I know a lot of people love me for my DJing, and they would have me just as a DJ. And as soon as I come with something else, because it's a bit more difficult, they will be a bit skeptical about it. One. Is ne never ever showed me a skeptical side he always said yes come and do it come and try and um, I think this is why we have such a long relationship because every single time we trying new things and then after that I can come back DJing but what I mean is every time I have a new project he's always saying come to us and do it with us and come and do it and experiment here and I know if I if tomorrow I have something completely crazy and completely new, if I call him and say, let's do the first one, even though it's really risky in your club, I know he's going to say yes. I know. So um, it's this kind of, uh, you know, relationship where you really do feel part of, uh, of the environment, of the family. And it's true when he says that. Hmm? I, I truly, I think he believes in good music. That's one thing. And, and we, we, no, 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 no. Which, which is not me, but, but I think we have a special relationship, as you have, he has as well with, with a lot of other DJs. But since the beginning, you know, it's very rare that you go and play in clubs and you meet the promoter and the promoter is so passionate about, about what he does. I mean, you know, there's things that don't lie. When you go to a club and every time I go to him, he takes a new picture. And you go to his office, the pictures are there, everywhere, you know? And, and when you walk in a room like this and you see one with Jeff Mills and one with Carl Cox with a big smile like this and one with DJ Rush and one with this and that, you think this guy is crazy. I mean, he loves it. He loves it. And you can feel that, you know. It, look at him. <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. I go to Ibiza, he's there. I go here, he's there. I go to wherever Florida is there. You know, it, it makes it quite special. It makes this relationship very, very special. And it's nice to feel welcome and to to know that there is places on earth where you can propose things and you have people that will go 100% with you. It makes us feel good, especially after 25 years of career. You know, I mean, it's not that many of us who are still there after 25 years. And it's nice to still have, um, to feel that you still have a, a strong base family where you can go and experiment and do things. Juan, muchas gracias. Y después de haberos deleitado con una de las entrevistas más entrañables de nuestro programa Open Up, solo me queda deciros Open Up Familia y hasta la próxima.